Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor confidant. So over the last couple of months, we've been talking about the adoption of these technologies into the mainstream. When do you go from innovator to early adopter to early majority? Part of that is going to rely on the adoption of these technologies into the medical community. We've got a lot of modalities coming down the pipeline. We've already got EEG, MEG, FNIRS, and even some ultra ultrasound capabilities are going to become very prominent in being able to scan the brain, get brain data. Wouldn't you think that when you went into a medical appointment, if they took your blood pressure, maybe got some labs to check your liver function, your renal function, your blood glucose, that if you had complaints about either sleep, your focus, your mood, that they should get some data from the brain as well? Why is that not happening yet? Well, partly it's because the modalities that do get brain scans either uh, have to do with giving you radiation with CT and PET scans, or with MRIs are incredibly expensive. Each one of those MRI machines costs about $3 million. So when do we have uh, technologies that individual clinics can purchase so that they can get brain data on their clients when they come in? Why wouldn't, why wouldn't you want brain data? Why would you go somewhere and have these complaints about your mood, your behavior, or your emotions and not get data that you can use? It would be medical malpractice not to get that data. Well, that's basically what's going on right now. Um, you know, I would know from experience, I'm a physician and a mental health provider, and instead of using brain data, we are using subjective scales, which are very highly prone to error. So how do we know that we have the right diagnosis? How do we, how do we know that we're giving people the right treatments? How do we know that our research studies even have uh, homogeneous populations, meaning that they, they have the same diagnosis so that we, we give a treatment, we can actually see if that treatment works or not. There is a lot of guesswork going on when it comes to treating brain disorders. And I'm talking about depression, anxiety, ADHD, traumatic brain injury, even things like mild cognitive impairment, which is a precursor to dementia, like Alzheimer's. All these things have to do with the brain. And not only is the medical community going to benefit highly from being able to get brain data and treat these disorders, the individual consumer will benefit highly just from having brain data and being able to engage in self-improvement processes to perform at their highest level. So when I talk about getting your brain scan for free, what I'm talking about is the reimbursement of getting your brain data by medical insurance companies. And part of that has to do with getting FDA approval of this process. Now, one of the things that made me go down this rabbit hole of when are medical insurance companies going to start reimbursing clinicians and clinics for getting brain data was seeing the system from AES International. It is a gel based EEG system that has a cap and software that uh, sells to clinics for around $40,000. And this company has been very successful at getting, getting reimbursed by medical insurance companies for getting brain data. It used to be that clinicians would only get EEG data for something as serious as epilepsy, or if, uh, for instance, they thought something was seriously wrong, like a patient had a brain tumor or something like that. But now we're actually, uh, the software analyses are coming along so far that medical insurance companies are reimbursing companies like AES International and physicians that are using their software and hardware to get analyses to look at things like ADHD, mild cognitive impairment, traumatic brain injury. If your provider actually suspects that you might have one of those disorders and they have an AES International machine in their clinic, they can get that brain data, incredible brain data that gives you a lot of information about how your brain is functioning and you can get follow-up time points with the machine to be able to see how your brain is progressing and I have that whole thing reimbursed by medical insurance companies. Um, you know, the, the patient might have little to no copay for a procedure that costs around $1,200. It costs the insurance company $1,200 to reimburse. Now, I know that isn't exactly free, but think about it. We all require medical insurance these days. You're paying those premiums. Why would you not want your medical insurance company to cover getting uh, brain data in medical visits, especially if you have complaints about how your brain is functioning? I think it's going to be medical malpractice 
practice in the future not to be getting this data to work with if you're getting treatment for the function of your brain. So you have these companies like AES International that cost about $40,000. All right, but the problem with companies like and setups like AES International is that it's a gel-based system. It takes a long time to set up. We saw this in Dr. Krieg Olson's 2017 paper, Choosing Muse. He really compared the Muse headband to a product like AES International has called ActiChamp and just stated the obvious, you know, for a gel-based system, it takes at least 45 minutes to get the client in there, uh, set it up, put in the gel. You have, it requires a uh, tech, an EEG tech to put that on because the doctor's not gonna have enough time to do that. So the doctor has to pay for the amount of time that it takes to set it up, has to pay for the tech that's going to set it up. And there's just a lot of costs behind having a system like that. What if you had a dry EEG system that was very simple to put on the patient's head, get brain data, and then move forward with the appointment? Obviously, the Muse headband wasn't designed or approved for full-on medical assessment, but the Krieg Olsen paper did show that dry EEG sensors can have comparable signals to gel-based, more costly EEG sensors, and that there are companies that we'll talk about here in a moment, iMedisync and Wavi, that are committing to the mainstream medical route that requires more rigorous FDA approval than the health wellness route that the Muse headband went that may provide a more widespread recognition of the value in EEG brain data moving forward. So what's happening here is there's a big opportunity for companies that want to design hardware and software combinations that get accurate enough diagnoses and data for the FDA to approve them so that medical insurance companies will reimburse procedures. As you can imagine, doctors and clinics all over the country, all over the world would love a system that they could put on their clients or patients, get good brain data to inform treatment and move forward quickly with the clinical visit so that it doesn't take too much time to get the brain data, but it well informs the treatment. And again, I'm not just talking about if you have epilepsy or you have a traumatic brain injury, I'm talking about more subtle things like ADHD, uh, mild cognitive impairment, depression, anxiety, even PTSD. All these diagnoses have biomarkers in the brain. We just need to find them and compile the data in order to accurately diagnose them. And these companies are almost like in a space race to develop the best systems for being able to do that so that the FDA approves them and they can start get reimbursed from medical insurance companies. And it's already happening. There's a couple of companies that uh, I have my eye on and uh, are very interesting. My next video is actually going to be about uh, iMedisync, which is a company in South Korea that has developed the iSync Wave. And uh, I interviewed the CEO in the next video that I'll put out later this month, but it was really interesting. So they were designing the software to be able to take EEG data and make these diagnoses. And it is a beautiful program. It comes up with all this information on brain circuitry and possible diagnoses and everything else that you could expect out of an EEG analytic software program but they realized that this setup with the gel-based systems is taking too long. They wanted to democratize this technology. So what they ended up doing was create their own EEG helmet that is easily just put on the head and it actually has the EEG sensors on these little brushes on top of uh, motors that spin the brush so that it works its way down through the hair follicles and gets a good connection with the scalp. So imagine just going in uh, to the clinic for a regular checkup and having this helmet put on you, getting good EEG brain data that your uh, physician can use to inform your treatment. Like incredible, right? I think that's coming in a couple of years. Another company that is American based is Wavi. Maybe you've heard of this one before. And uh, theirs isn't exactly dry EEG based. It does take a little bit of saline solution, but it's much more quick to set up than systems like AES International. And what's really exciting about Wavi is that they are pursuing a potential FDA approval from the US by the end of this year. Uh, iMedisync is working on the South Korean FDA system, which I've actually been told that the KFDA is potentially even more rigorous than the US FDA in some cases. So hopefully both of these companies will be getting uh, FDA approval and, uh, and then insurance companies are going to become more comfortable with reimbursing these EEG systems that are not uh, 
gel-based and can easily be put on clients and patients in the clinic. Now, my word of caution about using these devices for medical purposes is to seek personal and company legal counsel, especially if seeking reimbursement from insurance companies. Now, if you're a provider thinking about using these devices in your clinic, be careful about any promises that are made in their advertising about capabilities or insurance reimbursement claims, and be sure to manage the expectations of your clients in the clinic. Part of the package that you get with a company like AES International is that they show you how to do all this correctly so you don't get in legal hot water. Just because the device is FDA approved does not mean that you can use it to diagnose just any specific brain disorders just yet. The brain assessment needs to be incorporated into a full, well-rounded medical assessment with evidence-based medical treatment in a medical appointment. For the most part, these devices are currently FDA approved for acquiring EEG data, but the reports that they generate for disorders at the moment are quote, only supposed to be used for research purposes. The current space race that these companies are engaging in is getting recognition and regulatory approval for the reports that they generate. The reports have suggestions for specific diagnoses for the patient based on the data gathered during the assessment. In my opinion, that's what really needs to change. Medical clinics using these technologies should not have to play games with regulators to get reimbursed. The best example is the NEBA health diagnostic system that was the first FDA approved assessment tool for ADHD specifically. If you purchase one of these devices, the companies are going to help you out. The specific details about how you use these setups in the clinic properly involves the nature of the medical clinic, the credentials of the providers, the services rendered. This is a complicated process and requires legal and company counsel. For example, some companies like NeuroCore have gotten into deep water in the recent past due to inappropriate claims made about their assessment and treatment capabilities in regards to specific diagnoses like ADHD. Luckily, good people are working on it and we'll have some great interviews coming up to take a look at the recent history of this regulatory landscape and what to expect moving forward. What I'm trying to do in this video is present an idealistic overview of what is going on with the FDA and regulatory bodies that honestly seem to be putting up a hindrance to progress in some regards. Now, of course, there's been wild claims in the past about brain scans, about what you can infer from looking at brain scans and data, but evidence for getting reliable measures from these machines has been and building rapidly, and machine learning software is really presenting an opportunity to significantly move this field forward and provide real value to the medical community. With reliable reproducible data that informs the clinician, why shouldn't it? This area of medicine really needs to change, and as the software analytics improve, this needs to be continually reassessed by the FDA, in my opinion. And as you can imagine, as these become more widespread, as more clinics adopt this technology, and more people get exposed to uh, getting brain data in their clinical visits, this is going to become more wide, wide stream. They're gonna understand that uh, there's no radiation involved, that the, uh, the risk of getting this brain data is very low, and that the brain data can be very powerful in informing your treatment and informing um, your doctor on how to move forward with uh, your healthcare. And, uh, when you have that, when you have a population that is used to getting their brain scanned in medical clinics, that's when I think that uh, you really truly move from the early adopters to early majority. That's when it becomes mainstream because people are going to be like, hey, uh, you know, I got my brain scanned in the clinic, but there's also these devices that you can use at home to get data. It's really on par with, you know, when you go in uh, to medical clinic and you get your blood pressure taken by one of those big blood pressure ma machines, obviously you can buy a blood cuff from uh, CVS or Walgreens and take that home and monitor your blood pressure on your own. And the same thing goes for a blood glucose monitors. And even now with EKG, you know, you used to only be able to get EKG from um, the systems in the medical clinics, but now your Apple Watch can get EKG and make inferences based on um, those heart rate rhythms as well. So just like it has happened in those other biomarkers, we are going to start seeing biomarkers start to be uh, common clinical practice in the clinic to get data on the brain and then other consumable wearables available to, for use at home to use that data to inform your own self-development, learning, your performance, anything that you could think of that uh, brain data would inform. So there are some companies that are taking a look a couple of steps ahead and realizing that there's going to be this ecosystem of brain technology companies. Remember, just not EEG, although that's the one that's uh, at the forefront right now, we're gonna have FNIRS, MEG, and ultrasound information as well to help gain data from the brain. 
And what they are doing is creating a cloud-based system where you would actually be able to use any device, get information from that device that at least had some kind of agreement with them about sharing the raw EEG data, loading that raw EEG data into the system and having the system analyze that data and give you good feedback. So a lot of this has to do with large population statistics so that when you have your own brain data, you can load it into the system and the machine learning, the AI, can take your brain data, compare it to other people that have different symptoms and classify it appropriately so that you can get good readouts on how your brain is doing in comparison to either yourself or other people. A lot of people call that quantitative EEG. There are also evoke related potential exercises that you can do. That's mainly what Wabi does is that you can use ERPs by doing different uh, cognitive exercises and taking that EEG data that comes from the cognitive exercises and understanding how your brain is functioning compared to the norm. So this is a blossoming industry. There's a lot of different people working on it and um, you can really uh, get into it by experimenting with these different EEG devices. Uh, Divergence Neuro is taking a look at a couple of pilot projects. One of them was uh, with uh, Neurosity um, and with another company called Newphony. And uh, you know, these EEG devices are going to be supplying data for people to a database in order to um, get clinical grade information on their brains. Um, you know, I was speaking to uh, a friend of mine of, at one of these companies and he was saying, you know, the, the software is moving even more quickly than the hardware is because we have some brain data from the hardware already and the software because of AI and machine learning is evolving to a point where um, we might not even need full head coverage with EEG sensors or these other modalities in order to get good accurate um, predictions about how someone's brain is doing and how it might respond to treatments. So the question starts to become, do we need these big bulky systems that only can be used in the clinic or can we get really meaningful data based on uh, neuroscience and uh, big data analysis using smaller consumer grade devices that have less sensors but can plug into the big database and make pretty accurate uh, diagnoses and assessments with a limited amount of EEG sensors. And uh, if you think about where the world is headed, um, you know, telemedicine within the last couple of years has become big because of the pandemic, right? So not everybody's going to want to go into a brick mortar clinic anymore. So even if you could get your um, brain data assessed through telemedicine by using one of these devices, I think would be uh, a big thing. And, is, and getting remote brain data by use of consumer wearables is something that I'm going to be getting very deep into as I ramp up my brain circuit training program, which I'm really excited about. So stay tuned for some uh, big announcements about that coming up soon. So that's my assessment of the medical space. We need the FDA and these insurance companies to buy in to the fact that this brain data can be very valu valuable. And I am rooting for these companies to be able to demonstrate to them that these uh, technologies are worthwhile, we're getting good data, and it's going to help a lot of people. It's going to really help um, you know, the mental health pandemic that's going on right now and uh, you know, people that just wanna improve their minds and uh, their brains. So this is Dr. Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Thanks so much for the listen. Please subscribe so I can bring you more of this content. See you next time very soon.